Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're here with another car to show you all about. Uh, if you guys saw our last video, which would probably be a Batista, then uh, for sure, or if you didn't see it, just go and check that out maybe. But uh, today we are looking at a McLaren 720S, the creme de la creme of the road and the track, okay? This is quite the piece of machinery here. We're gonna take you this time. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this car actually has to offer. you with a wonderful looking key. I don't know if you want to get a close up on that. But yes, this key is amazing. It's sleek. It's tiny, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's very simple. Typical McLaren, right? So, when you unlock the car, fun fact, the door will unlock for you. All you do is lift up, there's a little handle on the inside here, so unfold, and the car will greet you with lovely AC. I don't know if the AC is actually working. Mint. So, not that this car has all the carbon options in the world. I'm sure it's missing a few. However, you get a lot of carbon options with this particular car, this particular spec, right? So we got carbon panels here, and we have a bit more carbon up at the front. I was supposed to do it in the meantime, but we have carbon covered mirrors, and we also got these carbon this shark sharpen vents. Mm. I don't know whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very welcoming car. You know, it ties in with the uh, the black um, panoramic roof that it also comes with. I'll show you guys in an interior shot once we get into the car. Also. This car has the night package, so it, there's like a really, there's like a little red light in the engine bay, so there's no purpose, no one else on the road can see it, it's just because the guy wants to buy it, and it doesn't make any sense. So, getting into this car, I'm sure you guys have heard McLarens are not the best to get into, right? Now, as this car is made out of a fully carbon tub and an aluminum chassis, um, you know, there's not much room for anything. Nonetheless, error. That's that's basically it. Now, if you thought that was cringy, just wait until I have to get out of it. More carbon as you are greeted inside. Once you get into the car, uh, I'll go ahead and turn on the instruments. As we step into the car, we are greeted with lovely carbon steering wheel, dry carbon steering wheel, carbon shift paddles. Also, fun fact about McLarens, if you're ever on your phone, I don't know why you would text and drive, that's silly, but if you're ever on your phone or you need to shift in some sort of situation, you could push forward and it'll shift up, pull back, same with this, if your left hand is not free. So, shift down, shift up, shift up, shift down. You are also greeted with a lot of other things. So you get the full digital dash. Um, the center console is also digital. And I believe it is also touchscreen, all right? Yeah, it's also touchscreen. So um, you have a lot of, a lot of, I guess it would be like track. Are you all the way up there? Man, because I'm 6'2 <laughs> and I'm not the most slim, like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> what, what do you want from me? So now I do have to make this quick because uh, McLaren's batteries actually have a life expectancy of an iPhone battery. All right, so the batteries die very quickly. Every car comes with a complimentary charger so you don't have to call them. Even though you will call them probably because no one charges their car. Unless you buy a Tesla, right? No one thinks, oh wait, I forgot to plug in my car, right? But um, yeah, there's a lot of, I guess it would be track setup features here. So you can change the car to manual. You have 
comfort, sport, and then track right here. Comfort, sport, track, CST. Leave it in sport. You have active as well. And then you'll watch the dash go. It'll change and everything. Turn off the active, dash will go back to normal. Very boring, very plain. We don't like it. Arrow button. Nope, dynamics, okay. Well, I think we actually have to start the car in order to do that again. If you watched our last video, you would know that we're not able to do that. And it's really, really, really awesome. This car isn't all guts and glory. There's a lot of things about this car that I'm not too keen on. Um, I'm not too keen on the amount of space you have in between the dead pedal, the brake pedal, and the gas pedal. If you're ever driving in Timberlands, God forbid, as I was yesterday, you are not able to really move your foot that much. You're basically touching your feet together. And think to yourself, there's no place like you. Also, another feature, um, these seats are very difficult to, to operate, to be honest with you. So you have the sliding mechanism like there was in the Pista, and then you have this thing. I think there's another adjustment for this side. In the event that your car actually is dead, there is a latch here if you can get into the door because when these cars die, it's like the Pentagon, no one can get in. There is a latch here, and if you pull that latch, is emergency um, door release latch. There's one on the driver's side and the passenger side. In case you ever get locked up. Alcantara, what else do you put in a supercar? There's Alcantara on the steering wheel, Alcantara on the horn, the center. There is actually nothing on the steering wheel. I've just noticed that, to be honest. There's like no buttons, no cruise control. However, that doesn't mean that doesn't come with it, right? You still have your indicator, left, right, and you have your wiper control right here. You have your um, cruise control. I mean, oh no, this is your uh, your voice command over here. And you have your cruise control and your front end lift on this side, down at the bottom here. This is the interesting part I was talking about. Now to get out of this car, some might say you need a can opener. Really, you just need 30 minutes. So leave the house with an extra hour. Stepping back into the car per se, you have the trunk or the front, the front trunk. Um, we have the car plugged in. Like I said, you need to plug these cars in or else the car will die and you will not get in it. And all this money that you just spent on this super fast 700 horsepower twin turbo V8 car is now useless, right? So in the trunk, we have the cover, comes with the charger, charger plugged into the wall. And uh, yeah, the, the trunk is actually very plain though. You would expect there was more coming from it. This is all metal, I would assume aluminum, but uh, yeah, no carbon up here. Right? In a car like this, you wouldn't expect them to have more than one trunk. You're wrong. If you just pull your lever here, throw your seat forward and take a look inside, you will see that there is a little bit of trunk space, maybe for your groceries. Don't put any watermelons up there. You have to break hard with these big ass carbon ceramic brakes. That watermelon's gonna hit you in the back of the head. Oh, stop. I don't know the car, I just want to I'm talking about that panoramic roof. I mean, why have a sunroof when you could just put glass instead? What's the point? Uh, it lets a lot of natural light into the car. Uh, when you're driving, natural light is a very nice thing. Uh, even during the day and the night, always an interesting thing to have. This car has soft closed doors. Now, um, if you guys remember on the McLaren MP4, if you guys remember on the McLaren MP4 12C, uh, the doors were very stubborn. The doors actually, they absolutely had to be locked in order for the windows to close and so that the car wouldn't die. So, this has soft closed doors. Another 
that. Now we're all car guys, all right? And I explained briefly what this car actually had to offer. But now I will go further into detail as much as I can. I honestly do not know much about these cars. Ask me about my Subaru, I'll tell you that. So, this car is equipped with a 4.2 liter, correct me if I'm wrong, twin turbo V8. So, this car is pushing upwards of 700 horsepower. Rear wheel drive completely, full carbon pump. This thing weighs just a bit over 2,000 pounds. If you're a car guy, you want the best for your engine, right? So, if you want to pump that 93 octane up in there, actually, this only takes 98, so you're, you're shit out of luck if you're in Canada. But, it, there's no gas cap whatsoever, just a straight insert. So, there's no hesitation, there's no button inside the car that you have to go and look for. As the million that it has, it's very nice that McLaren was ever so grateful and gracious to just put this out here. So that's there for you. To give us the sound of that beautiful twin turbo V8, we have two exhaust exits. And not in your ordinary place, they're actually positioned in the center of the car, I guess it would be. Uh, halfway in between the top and the bottom, and halfway in between the left and the right. The exhaust placement, it's actually very, it's very nice eye-catching, you know? You get that DME Stage 2 tune on it and the full titanium exhaust. You can shoot big, straight, five-foot flames out the back and everyone else on the highway driving a regular car is like, what? This brings us into the aero. Now, just looking at the back of this car, you see how it is and it comes to a point, you know? Uh, I think all the air is directed that way on purpose. So you have a automatic control link uh, that we've left up for um, dynamic effect. Uh, it's it's very sleek. I honestly I'm not I'm not big on aerodynamics, so I couldn't tell you. But yeah, I'm trying to say the stickies are. I'm sure it can hold a lot of weight, but just it has to not be crap and enough money to pay for it. But um. It sits right underneath the uh, engine. I believe this is also carbon fiber. It's just painted over. So uh, most of this stuff up here is carbon fiber. Here is carbon fiber. And you'll find that is the case on a lot of these cars. Um, just because um, people don't like that aggressive look of carbon fiber. How it kind of looks, sometimes it looks out of place, but if you do it just the right amount, it could tie the car together and make it look like a really beautiful car talking about the aerodynamics because I know nothing. McLaren knows everything. So you will see a demonstration in the center console there of how the airflow will actually go into the car. Talking about the aerodynamics, you'll see there is a groove, if you will, that comes straight into, down into, straight into the engine. You know, um, right through the door, it's very sleek very ventilated, very cool. Cooler car is a better car, especially when it comes to turbo. Well, the speed, you need some pretty good stopping power. So that's why we got these big boys up here, okay? We got these however many inches. We got these big carbon. Yeah, the carbon never stops, just you wait. But we have these big carbon ceramic brakes, okay? The schoolie boys in the, in the cold, okay? And with all this speed, which is approximately 100 kilometers an hour, because that's all we're able to legally do on Canadian roads, which we're allowed by the citizens, you need some great stopping power in case of emergency. You also get these nice tires. In terms of grip, tires are very important. They play a very uh, important role in your, in your cornering, your braking, your launch, your speed, your acceleration, your driving, your flying, your whatever. Okay, so we have 245, 35, 19. Fat. Thick. These are P0 Corsa. Because doesn't that sound expensive enough? Not only is it a mode in the Lamborghini Aventador and Huracan, but it is also a tire model. So 
They are actually very good tires. I recommend them more than the uh, Michelin Pilots for uh, You'll find these uh, mainly on McLaren's P0s. I think uh, kind of like the default, the default tire that comes on McLaren. So you'll see that on a lot of other McLaren's unless someone uses tires. No light dance on this one. Typically, uh, McLaren very unique to have the, like a light dance thing when you lock the car. These ones just flash amber and um, they get I guess so. The mirrors fold. Once the mirrors fold, you know the car is locked. Now, ever the case that the car is actually unlocked and you try to lock the car, just give me a second. Here. Now, in the case that you do try to lock the car and there is a door panel that is unlocked, the car will do that. That sounds better. Now the car will lock half. Now the car will sleep. She's going to charge. She's going to wait. Do great things. Slide corners. Go fast. Got people on the 407. Thank you guys for watching another NCAE Driven Car Review. This has been part two of our car review. Um, segment. Um, I'd like to extend another thank you to my cameraman and also the people that made this possible so that I was able to do a review on this car. Beautiful piece of machinery. Um, tune in next time to see what car we'll be doing next and I'll see you guys later.